and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ I therefore forgive you all and but well and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Let us pray to 
What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Holy Ghost. Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Word of Holy Baptism this week on page 325 in our reading from the Small Catechism. How can water do such great things? the apostles that we celebrate especially. We're not so used to, in our day and age, of having things called octaves, those eight days that would be associated with certain feast days. They are a part of an older calendar when people's lives were not governed by the things of the world, but were actually governed by the church calendar. For instance, Epiphany is a major feast day of the church, celebrated January 6th, last Friday. We observed it on Wednesday evening. A significant event in the life of Christ as, as he is manifested not just to the Jews, but manifested to the whole world as the Magi come from far away, bow before him and lay at his feet gifts. It was a significant enough event to celebrate for more than just one day. The feast would last an octave. That is, it would last a, a, a week, inclusive of the first day, Epiphany, and then the eighth day following. This means that if Epiphany were to fall on a Sunday, let's say, then the eighth day following it would be today, the baptism of our Lord. And so... This day, this celebration, this feast day, would still be included in that octave of Epiphany. Now, falling within that octave, that celebration of Epiphany, the unveiling, the manifestation of who Jesus is, today is thus tied to that Epiphany. As the designers, I would say, of our lectionary intended. For it reveals to us even more about Jesus not that he was just a king, a king of the Jews, born and recognized even by the heavens. But it plainly tells us, I would say, who Jesus is. It tells us what his purpose is. And it tells us what benefits he brings. For our text does tell us that Jesus, plain and simply, is the Son of God, the one in whom God's soul delights. We have the words of the Father that come directly from heaven, something that we only see twice in the Scriptures, here and at the transfiguration of our Lord. This is my Son, God says, with whom I am well pleased. Now, St. Paul would later write of this a right of his resurrection, that is the resurrection of Jesus, as the declaration by the Spirit that Jesus is the Son of God in the first chapter of Romans. We might say that here, then, those two combined, we have the word from the Father's mouth and the deed of the Holy Spirit. This revelation of Jesus' true divine nature is made known just as the angel spoke it to, to Mary in, at the conception. 
And we confess also in the Creed that Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. He had no earthly father. His true, his only father is God the Father. Now just as your Christmas gifts, as they lay, let's say, under the tree unwrapped, were a mystery to you. They were simply something wrapped up and enclosed, and you had no idea what was inside. The nature of Jesus was a mystery until he was unwrapped in these words of his father. He was the son of Mary, yes, the presumed son of Joseph. He was born in a natural way, just like every one of us. Fleeing, he had to run from Bethlehem with his family to Egypt because his life, too, was vulnerable. As vulnerable as the life of the Bethlehem innocents. He, just like the rest of us, had to grow. You know, growing pains. He suffered them too, in both stature and in wisdom. As those years of his life played out, he looked like any other baby, any other toddler. I bet you he screamed too during the service. <laughs> He was no different than any other young man in his appearance, no different than any grown man among the population. What made him different is what was hidden beneath the wrapping of his flesh. And though the wrapping remained, we are told what to look for. We are told what to expect. We are to expect great things from this man, marvelous things, wondrous things, things that no mere mortal man can do. We are to expect things from him that only God can do. Things foretold by prophecy, things promised of old. From him, as Isaiah tells us today, we are to expect justice. Jesus here in, the, in his baptism was anointed by the Spirit to bring justice to the nations. While word from heaven might be enough. We also here, though, receive that visible manifestation of God's spirit as he descends like a dove and he comes to rest on Jesus. Jesus is anointed. He is selected, chosen, set apart to accomplish a particular purpose, a purpose for which the Father had sent him to accomplish. As Isaiah said, he was to bring justice to the nations, that is to all peoples, even those whom the Israelites detested. The Hebrew word used for, for nations here is goyim. Some of you will recognize that and you'll cringe at the word. Because it has, while it does have that context of, let's say, outsiders, other nations, aliens, people who don't belong, it refers here to the unholy and the unclean. The kind of people to whom or with whom you cannot pray. The kind of people with whom you cannot sit at a table and eat. The kind of people you would not let your children play with. In his anointing, like David, he was visibly anointed, who was visibly anointed to be king. Jesus is visibly anointed uh, by, to be God's instrument of justice in all the earth. He is set apart to bring the justice of God's kingdom to earth. Here it is important for us, though, to understand that justice has two sides. There are the innocent and there are the guilty. In the immediate context of Isaiah's prophecy, it might be akin to what we understand in our own day as kind of social justice. The, the, the leveling of the playing field, the bringing about of equity among all things, where oppressors are done away with and where captors are overthrown. It is why the Israelites themselves, thinking in that same way, were looking for a Messiah that would lead a revolt against the Romans, who would throw off their oppressors. Yes, Jesus is ushering in a level playing field. He is upending those ancient power structures that have, have held man captive since the fall. Those of sin, of death, and 
of the devil. His purpose is to bring justice to the earth as he brings destruction to every rebellious and oppressive sinner, as well as liberty, reward to all the innocent. That demarcation between the guilty and the innocent, though, is one of faith. Faith in what Jesus says and in what Jesus does. It is faith that Jesus is anointed um, to, to be. It is faith in this Jesus who is anointed to be the great sinner before God. The one who is to stand there, who as the one being accused, the one who has rebelled against God, against the divine law, and who has lived as if God did not matter. He, being the guilty one, as, as even Pontius Pilate would say, behold, the man. This is the mantle that he assumes as he steps into the Jordan River. This is what he is doing, is saying, I am the sinner. It is your mantle, my mantle, that he hefts upon himself. It is the burden of mankind's guilt that is laid there upon him. Yet, too, he is anointed for the ministry of being the one who is innocent. The one who is truly pure. The one who is holy according to the law. He is established in righteousness and is raised from the dead for justification's sake, for our sake, that we might be declared righteous. That innocence, an innocent verdict, be levied upon the nations. In him is justice served, both the punishment of the wicked and the liberation of the afflicted. It is because of this that the Father is pleased. His Father is pleased with him because he does not shirk from this duty. He does not shy from being known as one like you. He does not selfishly reserve his beloved status for himself, but instead he shares it lavishly with you. Jesus came to be a covenant covenant so that for your own assurance when we contemplate the sacrifice of Isaac you know when Abraham was called to take his son up on that mount of Moriah and to offer him as a sacrifice when I read that when I contemplate on it when I think about it I think how unreasonable a demand of God that he would ask such a thing of his chosen servant he asks for the life of Abraham's son, that that covenant between he and Abraham might be assured. It is the life of one for the sake of another. Of course, we know that God does step in. He stays the hand of Abram, and he offers a substitute. He offers the lamb for the sacrifice. Abraham's faith was demonstrated and God provided the sacrifice still to seal the covenant. Isaiah declares that God's anointed would be the covenant of the people, a covenant for the people. He would be the one to seal the deal. This is what pleases the Father. This is what the Spirit of God is bearing witness to. Jesus is not just getting back. He is not simply affirming even the baptism of John. He, with his Father and the Holy Spirit, are here assuring you, enacting the covenant that his entire ministry, his obedience to every jot and tittle of the law, his every anguish under the burden of your sin, his very life's breath, is the taking away of your guilt and the giving over of his innocence. That in the forgiveness of your sins, you have a blessed righteousness that unwraps the Christmas gift of your life as God's son. 
The covenant is what we celebrate every Lord's Day from the invocation and the signing of the cross that reminds us of our own baptism that united us to Jesus in death, his death. On to the absolute and the full. Do the final benediction. Jesus Christ poured out uniqueness in its manifestation of God's covenant as we clearly see who Jesus is, the Son of God and the Son of Mary. We see in it his purpose for coming as that covenant that assumes our sin and bestows upon us God's righteousness. We see in it the assurance of the, or the benefit that is assurance. Assurance to us of God's pleasure in what he has done in his incarnation and with also us who now are identified with him in baptism. And according to faith. Today is about God assuring you of your forgiveness, of his favor in the covenant of his son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our prayers today, we have several things for which to rejoice. Um, I'll begin with uh, birthdays. We have three birthdays this week. Today is Harrison's birthday, uh, Heather B, um, George R. On Tuesday is, is Sandy. I know you're both sitting over here. They're both Sandy D's, and I'm trying not to use last names because of Facebook. But the, the Sandy D that is furthest away from me has a birthday on Tuesday. <laughs> and we have one anniversary, and that is Andrew and Lindsay celebrate their anniversary today as well. Um, Friday, we rejoice at the birth of a young man named Tormund to, uh, to Heather. Who, so this is a new grandchild for Lloyd and Judy, a new great-grandchild for Mary that is born. So we pray today also then for the safety and the, and the joy that, safety for mother and child and the joy that is, is received in that family. Um, with that, I invite you to stand or kneel with me as you are able, as we entreat our Lord on behalf of all people in Christ Jesus and for all others according to you. Heavenly Father, your Son fulfilled all righteousness and submitted to baptism with sinners in the Jordan. Well pleased, you opened the heavens for us and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. As you have joined us to Christ's death and resurrection by holy baptism and have given us your Spirit, strengthen our hearts and open our ears to hear your holy word and rejoice that you have made us your beloved children in him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, as you have opened heaven to your church through holy baptism, give her faithful teachers to proclaim your Son, Jesus Christ, and all that accords with godliness, that many would repent of their sin and join him in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God,
God, you have given your Son as light for the nations that all may see. Open the eyes of the wayward and the erring, that seeing and repenting of their sin, they may also see their justice in the Savior. For such we pray for those among us in our flock. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the gift of family. Bless all parents, especially mothers, in this for Heather and for Corbin especially, that all would joyfully acknowledge your gifts of spouse and children and home. Be near to the elderly, the widowed, and the orphaned. Show forth your grace to them that they might revel in your abiding presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son, Jesus, is the Christ and the true King of this world. Grant humility to all the rulers of the nations, especially to Joseph, that each would submit to the preaching of his holy word for the sake of their own souls and for the good of your holy people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you created the heavens and stretched them out. You spread out the earth and what comes from it. Have compassion on your creation. Deliver from danger all who are threatened by natural disaster, da dangerous weather, pestilence, flood, or famine. Provide all that is needed for this body and life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, you sent your Son as the servant who would... Preserve the bruised reed and the faintly burning wick. Hear us on behalf of those who stand in need of healing and deliverance, who look to you for reprieve from their afflictions, including Edward, Jean, Brian, Helen, Sandy, all others that uh, you have given us need to pray for. Provide healing, restoration, and justice according to your good and gracious will. And grant that we would always rejoice in your Son's everlasting faithfulness toward us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, in baptism we were buried with Christ into death and raised with him to walk in newness of life. As we partake of Holy Communion today, give us repentant hearts to receive Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have called your church from every tribe and nation. Grant that your people throughout the world would rejoice in the death and resurrection of Christ and live as those who have died and risen with him in holy baptism. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Amen. You may share with these. Uh,
Lord be with you. Christ our Lord, who at his baptism, your voice from heaven revealed him as your beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descended on him, confirming him to be the Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you, and say, Holy of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 O Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ will strengthen and preserve you both body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs>
mother sustaining her child. And right now we're kicking off a campaign of both GABA and Alpha of sustaining. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this, if you're not. Uh, the idea is to put your change, or your dollars, or your checks, or your contributions in the bottle. We'll be collecting these mid February, February 19th year, February 18th in Stanford. But the idea is to sustain, sustain the, the life giving work uh, that Abbott and Alpha are doing. So uh, if you could help with your change, or your check, or your contribution, uh, again, as a reminder, that $200 point buys a sonogram. And, 80% uh, of the women that see their unborn child uh, in the womb of the son of make the choice to, to bring it for them. So, it's a great work. These, these bottles will be uh, in the back as a sign-up sheet, and there's also a little information card about, about the campaign. Um, continuing with uh, Seoul's announcements, uh, the uh, 21st is uh, Sanctity of Unborn Life Day, and uh, <coughs> uh, that day in Augusta, uh, there will be uh, a gathering at the Maine Family Planning Clinic in Augusta at 11 o'clock. And the idea is to rally in support of uh, public. Um, there's also a 40 Days for Life kickoff event in February, and that runs through mid March. Instead of giving you all those dates, I'll, I'll put that out in the email. Uh, continuing with uh, the work of Souls here in, in Connecticut, this is New England District information. They're doing a rally at the Capitol uh, March 22nd in Hartford. And uh, the district is trying to get together enough folks uh, from each of the states so that they have to provide bus transportation. So I'll put this out in next week's bulletin with my email address. And if someone's interested uh, in going down to Hartford and uh, again standing up and marching for life, uh, please let me know. And thus concludes my basket of announcements. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If anyone's interested in helping out with the preschool and babies Sunday school class, there's a nice sheet downstairs. Others. Pets? I know we're collecting money for Alpha and Alpha, but there's also a mission box for Mites in the Nasdaq, and it also takes coins or dollars or whatever. The New England district will be sponsoring, I believe, uh, money for uh, people from Redeemer to go to the Czech Republic. Uh, hasn't come up for a vote yet, but I'm sure it will be coming up soon. Uh, there's a board meeting this week, so I'm sure it will be coming This week? Up. We haven't applied. Well, no, no but I, I, I've heard that you applied to somebody. And it, yeah. I mean, coming up most likely at the board meeting this week. Okay. Um, also, um, we need people to sign up for coffee hour. After next week, there's no way for the rest of January. So please sign up. It's not that hard. If you need information on how to do it, please talk to me. I'll be here at the service today for quite a while. And then next week is also a engagement slash bridal show for Rebecca Ruby. Uh, her fiance was here last week. You know, the real tall guy that had a doctor come into the show. <laughs> so he's gone back to England. Um, and uh, Rebecca will be getting married in England sometime late spring, early summer, um, and be living over there uh, because of his job. Um, so we, we invite you to come and enjoy in the celebration of all this next week. And if you choose to bring a small gift, small is the word, because anything she gets has got to go overseas. Um, something many. You know, M-A-I-N-E uh, would be nice. So please come, and there will be plenty of food afterwards. So thank you. Yeah. Which springboards, then, I'll just talk. I don't see Amanda. She's up here somewhere. But uh, there is a meeting starting at noon for anybody that might be interested in joining us going to the Czech Republic this summer. Um, if you just have the slightest interest, um, I would welcome you to come to the meeting and find out a little bit. And, uh, and we'll talk about grant applications with the LWML as well. Others? Paul? No. You don't want to make one? No. Come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Well, I was going to say, but well, I got something important to say. What did I say? Just a Very eventful because uh, when we do something, there's always 
Uh, kind of blessings to all of you. Uh,